Good afternoon, my name is Courtney Yerger and today I will be talking with you about one of the more awkward aircraft, uh, the Super Guppy. So some of the topics that we'll be discussing today is the history of the aircraft, the engines, the wings, the propeller, and the weight and balance. So why create such an awkwardly shaped aircraft? Uh, back in the 1960s, the Cold War was occurring between Russia and America, and at the time it was known as the Space Race. Russia was currently in the lead after sending Sputnik up in 1957, and with this, NASA desperately wanted to send a man to the moon before Russia did. With that, they required larger spacecraft with higher fuel capacities to be able to send a man to the moon. But with that came larger pieces to that spacecraft. This was known as outsized cargo. So this is cargo that is either uh, weighs a lot or is awkwardly shaped. And because of this, there weren't any aircraft at the time that was able to transport this cargo quickly and efficiently from wherever it was built to wherever NASA wanted to build their spacecraft. Um, with this idea in mind, uh, Lee Mansdorf and Jack Conroy who was an aircraft salesman and an aircraft engineer, decided that they were gonna try and solve this problem. In 1965, they developed the idea for the Pregnant Guppy, which was the first line that brought, was brought before the Super Guppy was created. Basically, they took two B-377 Stratocruisers and mashed them together to create the Pregnant Guppy, giving it a larger hull and able to haul larger uh, cargo as well. Um, after this was created, they decided why not create an even larger aircraft and decided to create the Super Guppy. At the time, it was called the V377SG and later was improved into the V377SGT. So with this aircraft, um, it needed a lot better engines than the first uh, Super Guppy, the SG version. Uh, due to the um, payload that was required of it and the haul that was increased. So the first round of the, the SGs was used the Pratt & Whitney T3434P7WA. Um, and then the second round used the Allison 501D22C. Uh, so it, the second uh, engine that was used produced more horsepower at 3,750 EHP and weighed 700 pounds less than the first one at 1,940 pounds. Um, so there were four engines on the Super Guppy and they were all turboprop. Um, and because of the second, uh, the Allison 501 being a turboprop engine, it allowed the Super Guppy to fly at higher altitudes and to um, basically be able to use less fuel with that. Um, the max load that came out of using this better engine was 52,500 pounds. So, the wings of the Super Guppy. Um, so basically, they took the wings off of the V-377 Stratocruiser and extended them out about 23 feet to create the Super Guppy wings. Um, with extending them out the 23 feet, it improved the aspect ratio to 12.34, which for a cargo aircraft is not bad. Um, the wing load was 86.5 pounds per foot, and wingspan was 156.4 feet. The wing area was 1,964.4 feet. The wings were tapered, uh, they were dihedral wings, and very low set on the aircraft. This created a very stable airplane for the Super Guppy, which when you um, have cargo aircraft, it's important to have them to be very stable. They also had Fowler flaps, which made it very efficient. Fowler flap extends out and down from the aircraft, extending the wing area and the wing, extending the wing area and allowing a wing to come over the Fowler flap, creating more lift. So the propeller. So the propeller that they used was the 54H60-123 propeller system. This was also used on C-130s. Um, so each one of these numbers actually has significance. The five is the major modifications to the original design. There's four blades used. Uh, the H stands that they use aluminum for the propellers. There is 60, uh, 60 stands for the spline size. 
and there's 123 minor modifications made to the original design. This propeller system is constant speed, fully feathering, hydromechanical, and it has two ranges, the alpha range, or alpha stage, which is flight, and then the beta, which is used in ground operations. Beta was basically used from zero to 34 degrees, and then flight was used from 34 to 90 degrees. Um, so basically this prop system used the governor and dome. Uh, the governor would allow um, hydraulic fluid to come in to change it so that whether it needed to be feathered or to change it to a constant speed. Uh, and it was important for the governor and the dome to work in sync, otherwise the uh, propeller would constantly be trying to find the perfect speed and that would really mess up with the aircraft in flight. And we got the weight and balance of the aircraft. Um, so basically, placement of the cargo in this aircraft was paramount to having it not basically fall out of the sky. The aircraft had 22 lock locations along the cargo bay, which was used hydraulic, um, hydraulically activated lock pins that would place uh, the cargo in a very specific spot so that the payload uh, center of gravity would not be away from where it needed to be to keep the aircraft in flight. Um, so basically they would have an aircraft engineer and a lot of uh, people that are very good at math would make sure that the uh, cargo in the cargo bay was where it needed to be before the aircraft would even go off, um, come off the ground. Um, so there was three zones in the cargo bay. They had the Alpha, the Bravo, and the Charlie zones. Um, so each of these had varying weight limits depending on where they were on in the aircraft. The Alpha zone was um, closer to the uh, cabin. It was the largest and it allowed the most weight while uh, Bravo was in the middle and then Charlie was in the back and had the least amount of weight allowed uh, per square foot. And then there's two types of loading conditions. There's the flight loading factor and the crash load factor. So basically they take um, different variables and put them into play on whether uh, the aircraft would be stable in flight depending on these factors. So the flight load factor would be used um, simultaneously. Uh, the three uh, factors would be used together to determine if to determine if the aircraft would remain in flight. And the crash load would just use each one um, individually, which is why it usually had a lot lower characteristics. Um, so basically, uh, that's my presentation. The Super Guppy is a very fascinating aircraft. Um, it was used in a very um, important time in history, and I think without the Super Guppy, we would not have achieved victory over the Russians in sending a man to the moon. Um, Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the